Well, welcome everyone. We are so glad to be here together for the first time. I did not start over and start again. Um, here we are <laughs> with the new version of the Work of Art Coaching Podcast, uh, a new iteration of this offering. Um, so grateful to be here with Stefan Marks and Deborah Geffner, two of the actors, as well as Stefan, a playwright and the director of a new play in Los Angeles coming out this spring called Ophelia. It's going to be at the Odyssey Theater in um, the end of April and into May, or be, middle of April and into May. Uh, a wonderful, wonder, Stefan is a wonderful playwright, and I'm so excited to get to share a little bit today about the play. So to get us up and running, the show is a story of tragedy, love, dementia, beat poets, strippers, blood splatter, time jumps, doppelgangers, saying goodbye, and ultimately appreciating those who came before us. Because those who don't remember their mistakes are perhaps destined to repeat them. The show is starring Deborah as mom, uh, someone who is going to be moving into memory care, sort of the setting of the play. Uh, Tatum Langham will be playing her, and Stefan will be the son. Um, and honorable mention, Amy Braddock, who is a dear friend of mine, will be understudying. So we're so excited to have you here. Thank you both so much for coming to this first of the new iteration of the Work of Art Coaching audio series. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. I'm very excited to be part of the beginning. Great. Oh, yes. Beginnings are also are very, very important. So, um, you know, Stefan, I feel like let's start with you sharing just a little bit more uh, about the show. Yeah, um, I love what you did with it. Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> oh, it's it like you saw it. <laughs> I want to see it. I, I'll never see it, though, I don't think, because I'm in it. But um <laughs> Yeah, this was a, a piece that I started writing back in um, summer of 2019, um, which is the perfect time to begin something right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Deborah and I, um, she came over and we did some readings of it. And then the pandemic hit and I didn't feel like it was the best time to put up mm. a play. It really felt like it took a, it, it kind of ground to a halt, but then, you know, time passes and you, you start to think, hmm, well, maybe, you know, we did incorporate the idea of the pandemic into the play. I mean, it's not a big part of it, but it definitely incorporates it a little bit and it adds a little element to it, which is, which is kind of nice. And, and it's nice to see things kind of returning a little mm. bit back. It seems like people really want to get out um, and, and see something. So it's just something that for the last, I guess, coming up on five and a half years, doing readings of it with people on, on Zoom and really just hearing it and trying to figure all that out and what seems to work. Deborah and I had been talking about the title of the play and I was like, oh, what about this? And she's like, mm. and then finally we came up with Ophelia. Mm. Yeah. And I want to so, jump in and please, just please say that to me the the pandemic was the ideal time to work on this play because uh, Stefan would, you know, text me and say, hey, you want to Zoom on Tuesday at six? And I would go, yeah. <laughs> and it, <laughs> I mean, it kind of, um, mm. it, you know, it, it kept me sane. Mm. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm reading a play with Stefan and it's coming into focus and I'm seeing him rewrite and, you know, <laughs> he talks about rewriting and he'll go, I made a bunch of changes. Can you see, can you spot them? And it'll be, you changed butt to and, didn't you? Yeah. But it changes the whole meaning of the scene, Deborah. <laughs> Different play now. I'm on to, I'm on Stefan's side with those butts and ands. Yeah. Absolutely. So Deborah, maybe you can tell us, um, since you've been a part of this as it sort of began, you know, uh, how would you describe, you know, the, if, if we knew nothing about the show, um, what sort of the story that we follow? Without any spoilers, of course. Um, mom is going into memory care and she's desperate for her son to procreate before she goes. It's comedy. <laughs> There's that's, a drama in there too. <laughs> that's my side of it. Yeah, great. That's beautiful. That's how, that's how I see it, um, you know. Yeah. It is kind of a running theme throughout that, that mom is kind of like, insisting that this is her story and it's kind of like ignore what's going on over there pay no attention to ah oh, yes 
kind of keeps said there is these two stories kind of going on at the same time mm -hmm. um and as well. is true in all of our lives right like we're the main story we're the main character i am i'm the heroine of what happened at the park the other day and the other mom thinks i'm the antagonist right? <laughs> all perspective you notice how sometimes the extras are the same you'll go into ralph's and you'll say you guys were just on the street outside in Westwood. I saw yeah. it and you're like, yeah. and, and, the West, and the Westwood exactly. people and the Westwood people are like, oh, that's the same extra, just walking into Ralph's, getting her groceries again. <laughs> Following me. So Stefan, for son, what's what's his story? I know he runs into her, which uh, may make things a little more exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have. I'm not all. I don't always act in my in my own plays, but I don't did. Don't you always? No, no. Okay. Especially in the. Especially, I, I started in 1999 doing plays. Wow. I really, thirteenth play I've done, which is I was born on Friday the thirteenth, so I'm like, lucky me. Um, but I haven't been in all of them I, lately. I've kind of been in more, and I realized that you know, I wanted to play a character that was. A little a lot more vulnerable and a lot more um so just one note that i wrote into the st not the stage directions but the character descriptions at the beginning yeah. was, son carries a handkerchief and he's not afraid to use it and i was like okay i don't carry a handkerchief but i was like does he have allergies no it, it's that he's you know he's an emotional person and i don't express that side of myself mm. much so i was like i wanted to do something that was a little bit more vulnerable and and i do think it's 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 a it's kind of a love story in a triangle it's it's mm -hmm. the love story of um a son and his mother and that relationship and you know i wouldn't say saying goodbye but dealing with those kind of issues towards mm -hmm. the end of life and the changing and the transition of stuff and then also kind of passing the baton which baton was an earlier working title to play to the next generation and saying, okay, now it's your turn to go live your life. And, mm. and so it really is sort of about, you know, it is what Deborah said, obviously about mom saying, look, you need to go out there and fend for yourself and continue this. Make, and, and keep, keep living. Yeah. He wow. is, uh, he doesn't have any kids and he's pushing a hundred years old. So he's, uh, he's getting up there, but it's like, <laughs> Time. It's now or never. So he yeah. Yeah, so he's her, who has her own issues. Sure. Definitely a, a lot of complicated stuff going on where there's time shifting and a lot of um, have they done this before hmm. many, many times. The and time shifting is really cool. The, the cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, I want to hear a little bit more about some of the not devices that you're using, but these cool kind of surrealistic uh, elements. I feel like that's something you do in a number of, of your plays. Um, but you, what you shared about the vulnerability in, in Sun is a big deal. And I think it's, you know, I, I, great love and great suffering are like what open up our heart in new ways. And I think it's particularly interesting for you as a, a man in this time where the conversation around vulnerability is like worldwide. You know, I'm a huge Brene Brown acolyte, <laughs> right? And um you know, part of even just um, some of the things we're looking at in the patriarchy. And it's like, it hurts men so much that men are allowed to be angry and happy. Like that's not a human life. No. Um, and so it's really interesting to me that you are like, okay, I want to show more vulnerability. I want to be in that. It's something that I am not maybe a, an aficionado at. And yet here's this opportunity in the theater um, to yeah, play with I mean that. Yeah, I want to express, I don't, I don't know that it'll come out. I mean, it's one of those things, what I like about theater is, is that I don't want it to be a situation where it's like, and then I cry on this line. You know, if I never cry or if Deborah never cries, it's not about that. It's about creating an environment where we've prepared everything, where as actors, we think we understand the world that we're living in. Um, but then every night, the exciting part is that we're doing the same material every night we're the same performers unless Amy's performing and it adds another cool wrinkle to it. But then we're the same people. It's the same material. We have a different audience, but mm -hmm. it's like the exchanges can be different. 
You know, it's like, how will we interact with one another? You know, if Deborah does something different, that's going to affect me. It's going to affect a lot of things. And there's been times in rehearsal where I'll just look at her and I get emotional or I start laughing at her because I'm just like, and then I realize, oh, I can't do that <laughs> during the <laughs> I'll, laugh and I'll be like, oh, that's funny. And I'm like, well, and, and, and also, I mean, it's so powerful that you two have known each other, that you've worked on this together, that you've developed a version of a relationship between these two characters and yourselves. I mean, that's going to be palpable. What has that been like for you, Deborah? Well, I've known Stefan since before this. Yes. Um, I cast Stefan in the first movie, the short that I ever did. Wow. It was a 34 minute short and I was, it was called Guitar Lessons. Wow. And I was looking around for a guy to play the guitar teacher. And um, he was the only person, mm. the only the only viable candidate. He was far and away. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I mean, so lucky to have had him in that. And um, I played, uh, he played my lover, um, now he's playing my son. It's kind of a reverse you guys, Oedipal. You guys have got like a Hollywood. Now, you've got a Sally Field <laughs> Tom Hanks thing's happening, you know? You go from um it's, it's yeah. No, it was great because it was like, you know, we did her movie and it was terrific. And then that was how many years ago, Deborah? That was like at least ten to thirteen. Close am I close? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. At least that. And and then I, you know, and then I went and I saw him in his band and then I went and saw his place. I'm like, oh, geez, I didn't even scratch the surface of what this person has available. And I have to say, Stefan is so much better a director than I am. I mean, it's just like far and away. Like one of the things that he said about, you know, it's gonna be different every night and, uh, so creative and so such a such a kind director such a such a giving director so it's been just a just a blast to work with him mm -hmm. through all of this and through all of that and just knowing him and seeing all the creative stuff that you've done Stefan and then to be asked to do one of your plays I'm like I <laughs> All I'll say to that is that ditto. I, right back at you. It's like um, we did your movie, and then I would go see your plays. You'd be doing a play, I'd go see yours. You'd see mine. We go back and forth, and it was always like, I know I want to work with Deborah. It's got to be. But even when we started working on it, I was like, I'm not even sure we're going to do this. But do you want to read it? And then, yeah. it came, you know, the more it was crafted and developed and we tinkered, I began to think, oh, well, the COVID's ending and it became a reality. And I was like, oh, absolutely. Um, we are going to put it up. And that's, mm. the, you know, that's the exciting part where you just jump out of the plane and go, did I bring a parachute? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Right. And, and that's, something I, that's something I really wanted to slow down and create some space around because both of you have carved out artistic careers for yourself as actors, but not only as actors, as creators, as directors in film, in voiceover, in theater, right? Like you are both such agile performers and creatives willing to try on maybe a hat that you haven't tried on before. And, and first off, I just acknowledge you for the courage that that takes and the willing. totally willing and eager to try on a hat that I haven't tried on before I mean otherwise mm. eh. mm -hmm. just doing the same thing over and over no uh -uh. and this this part gives me all kinds of stuff mm. to do mm. I get I get to use like a lot of this stuff that I've lived and found out and you know recently a couple of my uh friends have De sadly developed dementia so, you know and and so yeah I've been with you know I was with one of them during the pandemic when she was kind of housebound and that kind of accent accelerated right. it it's like I get to show that I get to honor that in mm -hmm. a way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so many of us are affected by memory loss Alzheimer's dementia you know, we have family members. My grandmother um, had Alzheimer's at the end of her life. And like one of the dearest uh, women, she, uh, she's my middle name namesake, my daughter's middle name namesake. 
Um, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a powerful and challenging um, theme to, to put on stage, but it also, like you were saying, Stefan, around like the, 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 the handkerchief, right? Like in your pocket, it's like, let's, let's load the gun with the most emotional um, kind of setup you can. Um, and then really explore that. What has that piece of it been like for, for both of you? You know, Stefan, do you have a connection of anyone who has dementia or was this more of the, the story itself coming forward? I feel fortunate. Both of my parents are, are still living and uh, they're going to be coming into play and that will make me emotional anyway. Mm -hmm. I've been pre-mourning my parents' death since I was eight years old. You know, I'd be lying. Oh, me too. Oh, I'd just be sitting in bed and I'd get up. i go, oh my God, they're going to die. And I'd run and get in their bed. I'm like, I'm going to sleep in between two. Is that cool? Yeah, you guys are going to die. And that was like, you know, I don't know why, but I was like, but it's, that being said, I did want to have a play where, um, where I honored uh, and, and basically said, I appreciate both of you, both of my parents. Now, <laughs> looking at the content of the play, you may be like, what? Uh, they're being on. My mom will always say, this isn't me. And I'm like, I didn't say it was, so <laughs> you'll be suing me. But um, I, I think it's important to do things that um, that scare you or that you go like, wow, this is going to be difficult. But it's, it's you know, I, there's been films recently in the last few years. Julianne Moore did a play, I um, mean, a movie. Yeah. Out, obviously, Anthony Hopkins yeah. did a, a movie about Alzheimer's and dementia mm -hmm. and you see those movies and they're important you watch them and but i always feel like i'm going to that place of mm. burden sadness yeah grief yeah heaviness yeah. and this play i think has a lot of lightness and levity but and it's not like mom's always in that zone because yeah. more expressionistic where she kind of gets to we see her as she might be inside you know and we get to see she still is inside and who she still is right and um you know there were a number of really great like family stories in as my grandmother experienced her her journey that she had six children she was never complained you know very active tennis player and um and she's looking at pictures with my aunt and my mom they're like mom look oh look at all these she goes yeah if i would have done it again i would have just played golf <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, right and, and the, the the freedom that comes out it's like you you are able to say the things that maybe socially you know were, were kept inside um yeah. people still remembering songs when they aren't able to communicate that that way so it's it's a really powerful and I know that it will be really meaningful to to people who are walking through this and to get to laugh that's that's really that's really powerful um, one of the things Stefan mentioned that I really appreciate is that um the inner the inner thoughts that it's are brought out it's like yeah maybe this woman we don't know where she is exactly in you know in her life you know is she in memory care right where you know where are we seeing where are we catching her mm. but all of those inner thoughts are are brought out mm. and i think that's something probably that like you said is within these all of the all of us right not to say these people i'm going to say all of us it's within all of us ah I, I i remember i have this feeling i i still have this feeling i still am that person yeah i still am the 16 year old who went to new york city i'm i i'm her and and you recognize that and i think this woman has that you know as well and it's i think it's brilliant Stefan. Yeah. And it sounds too like theater is like the perfect medium for this, right? Like, you know, as you consider what you're making, like, is this a film? You know, De Deborah, you made a short film, Guitar Lessons, right? It's like, no, that's the right medium for this. But theater is such a beautiful way where we can really be like, and what I'm really thinking is I'm just going to tell you and everybody gets that, right? Yeah. yeah what yeah, were you no. going to say, Stefan? I, I feel like I interrupted you. I wasn't going to. No, I was, I was going to agree with you. I, it, it does. Uh, there's a lot of freedom. Um, and as expensive as theater is, it's it's less expensive than than doing a film, I think. And you know, the goal is really to just uh, create a bond because Deborah and I have been working on it for six years, I guess, about five and a half years mm -hmm. off and on over the process. And then for the role of her, um, Deborah would say, you know, we'd get on a Zoom thing. She goes, "Do we have a her yet?" I'm like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
morning always like do we have one i go it doesn't matter yet because deborah's compartmentalized uh sort of in her scenes which is great it's like you know it keeps everything sort of well that's also so beautiful because deborah you are like doing what the mom is doing right yeah. you're like do you have the other one get the other, <laughs> one. Get the other one. So let's later. actually uh let's let's talk about her a little bit unfortunately tatum uh, nor amy were allowed to, uh, were allowed <laughs> they weren't allowed to join us <laughs> the women were not allowed to be here tonight please leave uh, that no don't <laughs> <laughs> we're not able to join us Correct. Um, no, but will you speak a little bit about um, the dynamic of this her, this woman, this young, vibrant woman who is walking through the same situations of you are also having a mother in, in, in memory care and, and both of you kind of being alive to what that little spark might be. T talk a little bit about that spark. Yeah, um, the character of her um, has a mother in memory care as well. And that's how we meet. We meet at the tea shop across the street from the memory care facility and have this deja vu, like, wait a minute. And within the confines of the play in the world, you do think, oh, well, these two have maybe done this before, but they kind of keep messing it up. Mm -hmm. And they're not aware that they keep messing it up. So that sort of storyline mirrors what mom's going through with her memory issues there's this other kind of fantastical element involving time shifting and jumping that actually uh kind of controls the world of sun and her but her is basically you know she's been dating she has a thing where no matter who she's dating she ends up in bed um and every night she goes to bed peaceful and feels happy and feels like it can work and then every morning in that process of sleeping, her subconscious takes over and she wakes up next to this shadowy visage next to her. And she's like, oh, and she just feels the, I got to get out of here. And this is not the right person. And I don't want to be with them. So she's trying to find the right person. But part of her thinks she already did, but mm. she can't get back to that person. And, mm. and my character actually is married. Um, I'm married to uh to a woman who's transitioning and now is going to become a man. So the biological children are kind of out of the equation at this point. So we're, I'm going through a divorce when I meet her mm. and you know, is it a happy ending? That's uh, something Deborah's nodding, but who knows? Yeah. In Deborah's mind, at least it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In mom's <laughs> mind, at least it is. You know, I, I feel like it's really interesting that we have mom and son as that the names even are the relationship. And yet we have her, yeah. right? It's not, it's not like mom, him, and her. Like this is not their- It's not him and her, it's story. mom and son. It's mom and son. And then it's there's her. there's, a, there's a her, you know, yeah. that, those, that, that triangular dynamic. And it's also probably, you know, a three-hander is a fun kind of a theater play, right? Like there's so many different relationships. There's her and mom and her and him and her and mom and him and mom and him, you know, or son. And so- um, how, how has that been? Where are you in rehearsals? Where are you in that process? Has it been fun to kind of start that dynamic together? Deborah, you want to take that? <laughs> um, it's been really great to get it up on its feet. Um, you know, after, after just going back and forth, line, 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 you know, all the lines for so long and really uh, getting them in it, in our bodies pretty much and in our psyches and like getting this relationship real mm. and then Tatum and Amy coming in I'm like oh sweetie <laughs> you don't you've got, know you've got you've got a month yeah come on good luck mm. I'm rooting for you yes and I mean they're doing incredible uh, you know memorization feats and you know so getting it on its feet and 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 seeing it is is wonderful it's also interesting to me to see how stefan and my scenes um interact with stefan and, and uh tatum scenes stefan and amy scenes because after their scene when i come on to do my bit it's it's a very different world mm. than, the energy, than the one that was when i exited the energy has fully the yeah, energy yeah. has completely shifted and I, I'm eager. I can't wait to find out what it will be 
you know, I, I know what it is right now. And I know that um, Tatum has so much more within her that she, that like is <laughs> to get out through the, you know, once she learns all the words. Um, and I'm just so eager to see what that's going to be and what that, mm. what that back and forth blah, 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 is going to be. Mm. Um, so that that's, it's, ex it's exciting and uh, fun. And I'm, I, I love you, Stefan, for just saying it's, it, for not setting, you don't set like, mm. okay, that's the way it's going to be, you know, for a line or for a, you know, an emotion or for a, an interaction it's like it's always different and I always see you reacting differently and it it affects me differently and that's so exciting to be on stage with so oh, I don't yeah. have as much that's, I don't have as much interaction with sure. uh more Amy but I'm really excited about it. How's it been for you Stefan I it, you know it's so interesting to kind of go back I I have uh, adapted a play that I acted in and so I had that writer brain on for most of the rehearsals because we were really workshopping it. And at one point, a few, a couple of weeks before we opened, my director said, I've sent the writer on vacation and I'd <laughs> like to invite the actress to come to, what? and I was like, I have to act this, no. Um, so what has it been like for you transitioning from being the writer to then now you're in directing mode, but you're also in it. It sounds like, it sounds like you have a nice fluid relationship with those different hats. Um, but specifically, you know, um, speaking to like, what's been your experience of getting it up on its feet as first the actor and working with Tatum and working with Deborah? Yeah, um, the, the acting has been really good. It was a long process um, in casting her. Uh, it was like over the holidays, it was like sending out stuff over Thanksgiving and then taking the time over the holidays to review tapes and then callbacks in January, knowing that the role wouldn't be cast until like February 1st. Mm. And, uh, Quite so a process. Yeah, it's, it's, so there's the casting element, but the writing, I wanted the script to be pinned down pretty much mm. so that I'm not sitting there thinking. And there haven't been like any changes since Tatum's been cast. There haven't been any major changes like to the script, like we're gonna change this and tweak this because over the process of, of the five and a half years or whatever and developing it, kind of weeded everything out. So yeah. I wanted to get that done. The producing of it too, I started last year because I wanted to be like, get all that stuff out of the way mm -hmm. so that I'm not worried about that stuff during yeah. these this last few weeks. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, yeah so the directing is a lot of fun. That's what I really love the most. And it's interesting because the I know what it, I think I know what it's going to look like in a month. I think I, but you know, when you're in a, you have to just figure everything out and the space is an unusual layout. It's great. It's a modified thrust and an L shaped. Um, it's a cool space. And at first I looked at it and was like, Oh, well, this is a liability. And then I went, no, it's not. It's an opportunity. And <laughs> you have to go back and restage things. And stuff is not, you know, even in, we had a full, we had two full run throughs yesterday. Oh, wow. Aiden is just getting off book and, and doing great. Like her super fast, like in five weeks, she's pretty much off book and is getting it into her body and starting to, oh, okay. And, and like I said, Deborah and I have had a lot more time with that to go slower with it and process it, yeah. but we're still working with, you know, entrances and exits, but the walls aren't there. And, and so in rehearsals, we're very stressing like, oh, that's a wall. This is your entrance and you're over there. And Deborah's like, there's no wall there. And I'm like, yeah, there will be. There's a wall. There's a wall. There's a wall. There's a wall. Yeah, so <laughs> things and, and, and really try to be as free as possible in the process. Mm -hmm. The acting, I think the goal is try not to be too different on opening night because at, at that point I will be – Director, get out of here. Writer, get out of here. Over on vacation with my <laughs> with my writer self. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't care what happens mm. uh, on opening night. What is said, it doesn't matter. It's like you know the part at this point, and to both of them, it's like you know what you're doing. Just go out there and live this. Whatever you say, trust mm. it, and I'll react to whatever you do. 
And I know as a team, we're going to be out there as a threesome. And then the tech people too. Everyone's going to be connected and we're just going to go out and do our very best. And ideally at the end of the play, we don't know how it went. We just went through it. And we we go through it and all the technical crap is out of the way. We're not worried about cheating open and, you know, my eyeline. None of that. If we're just looking at each other and dealing with each other and the, the reality within the framework of the play, mm. I think it'll be really cool. But that's in a month, one month, one month from today, we have a show. Wow, amazing. I mean, and, you know, you said you don't care what happens on opening night, but what I'm hearing is that you are not locking into some idea of what you want to happen, that you actually really do care oh, about, cares what, very happens, much. about yes, what happens right then, right there that night. And then the next night, you're going to oh, care about what happens right there, right then, you know? I, good point. I will c- probably care way too much. <laughs> point where I'm already like, you know, you talk about, I'm already anticipating that the sleep after the play closes and huddled up in a ball, sucking my thumb going, now what? But <laughs> I, do look forward to, I feel very, very lucky that Deborah cast me in her piece so many years ago and very lucky now that, Tatum and Amy both are just such incredible people and they're very smart. And that's really, they're just sharp, really sharp and very cool people. Mm-hmm. And the back and forth is just fun. It's really, and ultimately it's, uh, like I said, it's a love story. It's a love story between three people and, mm-hmm. you know, two of them don't meet much mom and her really don't have a lot of interaction, but it's still kind of passed through son mm. to her from mom to, to her. So, you know, it's, it's it, great. It's gorgeous. I mean, one of the things I want to make sure we hit on is you have both created in big ways and you've both had many years of trial and error, you know, Stefan, the, the, the wisdom of being like, I want to get all the producing out of the way so that I can be present. I mean, when we're wearing too many hats, particularly as young artists, like we're losing our minds and it's not serving anything. What would you say to a couple different people? One is the person who's new to Los Angeles or new to their artistic career, who's got a lot of fire, a lot of energy, and maybe even like a, a community of, of friends that want to do something like, what would your advice be to that person? And then Secondly, what is your word of wisdom to the person that's been here 10, 15 years, that's tried a bunch of different things, that's maybe hit their head against the wall, but maybe there's this idea that's that's not leaving them alone and, and, and it takes that vulnerability to start again. You know, what would you say? Maybe each of you pick one of those. Who do you want to talk to? You want to pick the newbie or the one that's like the, the veteran that's like trying to pick themselves back up? You know, what would you say about creating um, to encourage just the making of? You guys. <laughs> Um, Got it. <laughs> Shotgun. Um, I I have been asked to talk to people from time to time. You know, oh, can you talk to my friend? And um, if there's anything else that creates that same passion in you that you have for acting, do that. This is so hard. Um, but if there's but if but if this is the thing for you, if this is your passion, if this is your love, it's worth it. Um, I went through having, you know, uh, getting married, having two children, uh, my agent quit the business, my next agent <laughs> quit the business, maybe. <laughs> Good luck, Chuck, over know. there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe no one. But, uh, and, um, you know, and I went through a, a real fallow period mm. um, and taking care of my mom before she passed on and, and getting my kids through high school. Um, and I feel like I'm back with mm. so much more understanding of life, of the business, of how to take care of myself, of how to take care of others, of what it is I want to do, of how important it is for me to tell stories and let people 
see me tell stories. And it is that passion and that love. If you have that, feed it. <laughs> feed I it. I have a recurring dream where I find a little, I find a box in a cupboard and I open the box and it's a little puppy that I forgot that hasn't been fed mm. for years or months or we, depending on the dream, or it's sometimes it's a lizard or sometimes it's a cat. And I'm like, oh my God, they died. And then I take them out and no, they can walk. And I, I feed, I give them mm. food. That's obvious. Obviously that's, mm my creative self hmm. feed it love it feed it feed it i love feed it, it. Mm, so good Stefan. what would you say particularly maybe to somebody who um would like to technically make something that they wrote what would you say to that person i would say i'm not giving a pet to deborah for christmas well a obviously no, no. um I would say a sidebar on that dream she's been having. Did she fall out of her chair? I think she's done. I think we've she's done. Oh. Yeah. Speak, speak to, say hi to Stephanie. Uh, alive right? and well and living in Brooklyn. <laughs> Deadly. Um, I would say honestly, for me, I can't, you know, say, but I know I don't feel right if I'm not being creative and it's not about acting so much. I look at it as like the whole process. Mm. Like writing is to me the most, that's where I feel the best. If I mm. can write something and express myself that way, I don't enjoy acting in other people's stuff. I just do not enjoy it. I don't like it. I don't have the ability to relate to other people's problems. No, it's not true. Uh, but First, maybe we'll cut that moment out. Just kidding. There's a little bit of truth. There's a little bit of truth in that. It's, selfishly, I do believe that um, it's like painting for me. If I was going to paint something, I wouldn't tell somebody else, well, this is my idea for a painting. Go paint it. So I look at the script as the blueprint for the play. Wow. And that's the first thing is I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not precious with it. I don't ever want to be published. I don't want to be like read. I don't want people to read my stuff. I just want to put it on and work with, find other people, uh, whether it's creative people um, or in technical people, the same lighting designer, Mark Spostix. I've been working with him since uh, 1989 at, we met in college and he's mm -hmm. terrific. Steve mm -hmm. Epstein is uh booth up and does a lot of music and sound and video design. He's terrific. Brett Pearson's is in my band, but he's also um, a dear friend and he's stage managing. So those people, it's super important to have that connection. But then if you can find people that, that mm. I don't know what the part is going to be when I write it, the other parts or my, uh, even my own, but if I write it and somebody brings in something and I go, Oh, that's, the right direction that's really cool i want to see what they're going to where they're going to take this and that's where i am with deborah and tatum and amy i'm like i'm excited to see what you do and i'm so appreciative of their their talent and their hard work a lot of people came in an audition too and they were terrific and it's like you can't cast everybody mm -hmm. but you do sit there and, and i got really <laughs> really upset stomach and nauseous casting because i was like this is the worst part to be like people put in so much time and effort and you're what like puppy do i want to put back in the box and put in deborah's closet you know and, and not and the fact that any never have told you the dream yeah no don't and the fact <laughs> that anybody would honor me with submitting an audition or a material prepare the material as as well as they did and say here i would like to be considered that's a great gift and mm -hmm. i i'm so appreciative of other actors and what they do. So I would say to answer your question, if I could do it, just mm -hmm. do it because I, you know, as I'm getting older, you, you kind of go, well, maybe I can wait. And then after a while you go, what am I waiting for? At the, you know, at this time in my life, it's like, if I guarantee if I write a play, I might book the part. <laughs> chance, a good chance to be cast. Now you're also setting yourself up for, you really shouldn't have been in that, but so what? It doesn't matter because I'm a big proponent of we have, you know, one life, do your best, yeah. get out there, kick some butt, meet some people. And 
the play, the creation of the play every night, that's the magic part. That's the fun part. You know, it's not videotaping it and watching it later because it'll never be the same, but it's like, what happened? And who was in the audience? And did you see it? And it was fun or it sucked. You know, it felt weird. But I think really just. I hear in that so much too about the relationships. It's the people. You know, it's, it's like, and Stefan, you're incredible as an example of this, you know, your, your band that you started in high school, college, college, that college is still performing together. They were all the cast of middle eight, you know, and to see the relationships grow and just, it's a real testimony to how you treat people and how you interact with people and, and your value of that. And so that's another thing that I'm hearing from even both of you. It's like, if, if you're passionate about this, do this. And the, what is sometimes not even more important than the who. Like, who are you surrounding yourself with? Let's go do their thing. I mean, you know, it sounds like the people that have been, you know, your your bandmate who's like, yes, of course, I'll stage manage for you because uh, because it's you. Right. And then you're like, what can I do for you? How can I step in in another world? So powerful. it's and, and then I'll just say one other thing about it is that also the dear friends and people who've come and seen the plays over the yeah. years and re- keep coming back and who go oh i like this one better than that one or wow this was interesting or this was neat their support is absolutely everything because it's like we have you know when you when you say you're going to do 2100 performances in my mind as the producer i go okay so you take one off it's 99 seat 21 minus 21 so that's uh 2079 seats we need to fill so lynn if you know 2079 people that want to see a play in la i do Call them. I do. Well, we are. We're calling them in with this. Yeah, you found the mayor um, here. <laughs> um, but it's it's powerful. It's beautiful. Yes, Deborah, you were going to share something. What I heard from what you, you said too, Stefan, is take the step. If the universe presents you with like, oh, maybe I should do it. Take the step. Yeah. Go ahead. Take the step. You, you will be, you will learn something. You'll learn something from doing it. Don't just sit there and go, oh, shit. I don't know. And the other thing that you didn't say that I want to say is how prepared, be as prepared Mm -hmm. as you possibly can be. Be excellent. Give, give the universe, give people, give your, your friends the, the opportunity to cast you, to, to, work with you by being mm. excellent mm. prepared well that's everything yeah. you can do. Work, work the heck out of it you know working on your own time will you know which is your time and it's like i think there's a there's a balance being a single person as i am i can put all that time into you know my neighbors wish i wouldn't but i'm like i can practice the beat poem at two in the morning mm. um but when i'm in a relationship i do find it very difficult to balance those two things mm-hmm. it is tough because you want to also feel like you have the support of your partner which i have you know for the most part it's like but you have to have a space carved out for i'm gonna do this now i have to do this you know and both and, are very important and and you know this play talks about the different seasons of life and we all have those different seasons of life you know deborah you mentioned um, being a mother or taking care of your own mother, you know, Stefan, you've had different seasons in life when you've been in an intense relationship or, or not. And I am a new mom myself and like giving ourselves grace to be where we are yeah. and to know that our margins can, can shrink or they can grow in different times. Like, you know, I, hearing about your show is just so delightful to me. My heart is theater and this is just not on the table for me at the moment because I am now valuing nursing my daughter to sleep every night right like that's just a part of where I'm at in this season and that that is not how it's going to be forever right so it's like it is seize the moment of like what is the thing that's calling you to make right now do you have the margins to go for it go for it because you may not always have that um so I'm going to wrap us up here and just again thank you both so much for your time uh one last question is what do you want the conversation at the bar afterwards for, to be like what do you want the audience members to go off and grab a drink and what do you want them to be grappling with or questioning can deborah start that no oh you know what i'll say i want them to talk about me yes. <laughs> deborah will be like, deborah is amazing uh right. yeah right. uh for, for me <laughs> honestly i wanted to think deborah was amazing no i want them the best compliment that um 
that anybody's that I resonate with the most is that if somebody sees the uh, play that I that I do and they're like I'm still like if they send me a message I'm still thinking about it and it's like a week and a half later mm. it's not just you know and that's how I value something is like if I go see a movie I can enjoy it but if, did I forget that I saw it the next day did it have a tail it, well just does it yeah does it and and obviously the biggest compliment is if somebody's like oh I want to come back and see it I know a couple people like uh Keith, who was in the casting process, uh, Middleton, Keith, the uh, assistant on that, he's like, I'm looking forward to coming and seeing the play with Tatum, and then I'm going to come back and I want to see Amy in it as well, because I want to see the differences, yeah. you know, I want to see yeah. what that does. And I have friends that are like, I want to see it in the beginning, and I want to see it at the end. I yeah. want to see where it goes to. And that's, that's terrific. So I would love for them to say, you know, did you like it? I don't know. Is, mm. is somebody like it? I can't control that. I can't even control what theme that a person gets out of something. But hopefully, like Deborah said, they look and say, oh, well, these people worked hard on this mm -hmm. and they put a lot of effort into it and putting their heart into it. And hopefully they go on a journey and forget they're holding a program and forget yeah. they're looking at a lighting instrument yeah. and forget their cell phone for an hour and a half. And then you just kind of go through this thing and you come out of it and you're like, oh, I feel different than when I walked in. Yeah, I feel. I lived, I lived that life. Yeah, yeah. and I can, yeah, I can share as as an audience member for one of your shows. I definitely, I I was so moved at the end of the show. I absolutely knew I was coming back, and I knew I was bringing my husband with me. Um, and so I, I have no doubt that this 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 theater piece, Ophelia, at the Odyssey Theater, opening April twelfth, going through May eighteenth, will also be just a really beautiful time. So I encourage people to check out all of the information, to grab a ticket now, to bring a friend, you know, somebody who maybe is not a theater person that you're like, let's go to see this thing. It's, you know, it's post 2020. We can do whatever we want now. Let's go. Um, maybe someone that, you know, in, your, in there uh, who has a, a family member who's gone through dementia, you know, an opportunity to sort of look at it from a different lens. Um, so I, we do invite you all to, to check out the show. Deborah, Stefan, thank you so much for coming on. And if you have any questions or if people need anything, where can I direct them to go and, 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 and get tickets? Um, anything else? There's a, a website that shares my name. Uh, it's Stefan Marks, S-T-E-F as in Frank, A-N Marks, M-A-R-K-S, dot com slash Ophelia. And that has all the bios, all the blurb information, but it, the best part is it's got a hyperlink at the top that says click here for tickets and it takes you directly to the ordering page. Right, and even if you just Google Ophelia Odyssey Theater, it comes up um, right away. So thank you all so much. We really hope that everyone who took uh, uh, the moment and the time to be with us, we hope that this was um, nourishing for you and supportive. Um, if there's anything that you want to reach out to me about, I can be found at theworkofartcoaching.com. And uh, we just wish you all the very best. Hope the show is as delightful um, inside as I know it will be outside. Thanks, Lynn. Great. Great questions.